Hey guys, a very good evening. Welcome to the channel. So I thought of introducing you to a very important topic, which is airdrop isomerism. Uh, it is recently gaining momentum in research aspect as well, and rightly so. It has also been introduced in the gate examination, the gate 2021, as a new topic, right? So what exactly is airdrop isomerism or airdrop isomers? Uh, so basically, it is derived from a Greek word which means airdrops. Okay. And what is the meaning of atrops? Atrops basically means the one which cannot turn. Okay, basically the one which cannot turn, that is what atrops means. So from there, this word has been derived, this is atrop isomerism. So basically, this isomerism arises because of a hindered rotation around a carbon-carbon um, bond. Okay, a carbon-carbon single bond. And uh, like I had posted a question related to this topic also um, on the community tab. So this is the question. And we'll discuss the question later on that what is the possible answer for this question. Uh, but let's first discuss the concept of atrop isomerism. So like I said, it is basically some kind of chirality that is generated because of hindered rotation around a carbon-carbon um, single bond, right? So for example, if you look at this molecule, many of you might have seen this is called binol. Okay, it's a very, very popular structure. And if you see this structure is chiral. Okay, now it looks like a bifinal system. I, am, I hope that most of you who are at a little intermediate stage, you will know how to find the, um, you know, absolute configuration of biphenyls, uh, you know, which do not have a plane of symmetry. So first of all, for the isomerism to exist, atrop isomerism to exist, the plane of symmetry should be absent. There should not be any plane of symmetry. That is the first scenario. Now, if you look at this molecule over here, these two OH groups are there. Okay, and then it is also a tertiary, like there is a tertiary carbon on, bo on both the ends. So what happens, there is a hindered rotation about this carbon-carbon single bond. The easiest way I can tell you is like, let's take a bifinyl system. Okay, let's take a simple bifinyl system so that you can easily understand this. Okay, and let's say on this bifinyl system, what happens is we have two bulky groups attached over here. Okay, let's say X and Y. And similarly over here also I have two bulky groups attached X and Y. Now you know that for bifinyl system what happens, bifinyl systems are like this, okay, they are oriented like this. Why so? Because, uh, because uh, let's say this is one substituent over here at the ortho position, the white chalk, and let's say the orange chalk is the another substituent, okay. Let's say this orange chalk is the other substituent, like this, okay. So when I try to rotate these rings, okay, I told you that they are basically attached to a single single bond. So when I try to rotate these rings, you can see that these bonds are clashing, okay, these two substituents over here, they clash. And because of this clashing, what happens? A chiral axis of symmetry is generated in this molecule because of which they become chiral. So if you see this biphenyl system, biphenyl systems also come under atrop isomers. Okay, because over here there is a chirality generated due to the hindered rotation around the carbon-carbon single bond. So wherever there is a hindered rotation around the carbon-carbon single bond, your atrop isomerism is generated. Now this is a very typical case. Most of you would be able to find out in these molecules. But let's say this is a drug molecule called aflacolone. Okay, it's called aflocolone. I'm not very familiar with the spelling, but I think it is somewhat like this, aflocolone. So it's a sedative, basically. Okay, it's a sedative and so basically it is a muscle relaxant. And if you look at this molecule, um, you can see that when you talk about this, uh, not just carbon-carbon single bond, but any hydroatom. So over here we have nitrogen-carbon single bond. And you can see that we have a methyl substituent over here. And at this position we have a CH2 fluorine uh, group, right? And on the on this side we have oxygen. So you can see that this bond will somehow be hindered because of the presence of this CH2 fluorine and this oxygen. So in this molecule also you will observe atrop isomerism that is hindered rotation around the carbon-carbon bond because of which this system over here will become chiral. Right. One of the very classical examples um, that I would want to talk about is uh, this example, which is actually where atrop isomerism comes into the picture. Like it is very very important to discuss this example, which is. Um, let me just draw the structure. So this is your phenyl ring. Um, over here we have uh, a carbonyl bond. Sorry, yeah. Over here we have a carbonyl bond. This is attached to nitrogen. Okay, this is the molecule. And then over here we have some methyl substituent. Some sorry, ethyl substituent over here and methyl substituent over here. Now the question is that in this case also, if you look at this bond, this bond will be a hindered bond because of the presence of this bulky group over here and then ethyl group over here and methyl group over here. So again, this molecule also exists as atrop isomers. Now, see, uh, the problem is that why this, this topic was or this chirality was found a long time back. But why has the research uh, not been so, like, so great over here is because 
the bond rotates only when there's a barrier to rotation okay when there's a barrier to rotation then the bond does not rotate if the barrier to rotation is very high so in this case the barrier to rotation is so high that it takes almost i think um if i'm not wrong it takes about 10 days for this bond to rotate so even though the barrier to rotation is high this bond is going to rotate and you know race mice this molecule is going to race mice if i if i if i basically isolate this molecule in one enantiomeric form after some time it will race mice so this molecule i think takes approximately 10 days to race mice okay and to convert into the other enantiomer so even though the barrier to rotation is high but yet it 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 will eventually you know convert and race mice right so it depends upon the molecule to molecule if we have a very small substituent like over here we have the methyl attached to a fluoride right but maybe if we had a only fluorine substituent over here then in that case it will exist as atrop isomerism it, it basically it will show atrop isomers but the problem is that maybe the barrier to rotation is so low that it might be there only for a few minutes so that is why uh, you can see that the scientist uh, did not pay much attention to this particular aspect because Generally for small molecules it was found that it hardly takes 20 to 30 minutes to race mice. So that is why they did not you know consider it as a very uh, very important priority but when they developed molecules like this, this is also a drug molecule which takes approximately you know 10 days to race mice, um, then they understood that it is important for us to you know address this issue of atrop isomerism and that's why the research has again picked up on this particular topic because uh, most of you might have heard about the thalidomide uh, tragedy. So over there what happened just the change in the enantiomer led to various birth defects in children okay it was given this drug was given to pregnant women and they thought that you know whether it is the r enantiomer or the s enantiomer does not matter they will not have much difference in the effect but the case was that one of them was helpful in treating a disease and the other was basically developed some diseases diseases in the um, children so that is why now they have started paying attention to atrop isomers because they understand that um, their stereochemical uh, aspect is also very very important and that is why the research has you know again picked up on atrop isomers and like I said uh, it has that that is also one of the reasons why it has been introduced in the gate examination though the atrop isomerism has been asked previously in the form of biphenyl systems but you have to remember that in such systems also your atrop isomer exists right um, because of the four, like most of the students would not go for this example they would not think that an atrop isomer will exist in this okay but the important aspect that you need to remember is that the plane of symmetry should absent, should be absent <clears throat> now in these six molecules um, you can see that i have highlighted the four molecules these four molecules will show atrop isomerism uh, the rest two uh, the one that you can see the fuse system that is basically uh, the helical chirality that is showing helical chirality so i had asked this as a numerical type question and so the correct answer will be four and these are the four molecules that will show atrop isomerism so I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, uh, please like this video. If you want to make any requests related to the topics, let me know in the comment section. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would request you to please subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Hey guys, so I'm a verified educator on an academy. And along with that, I'm also available on the Unacademy Plus platform where I am taking live classes along with other educators. So in case you are interested in attending the live classes, you can subscribe to the Unacademy Plus platform using my referral code that is SETHI SETI and that will give you 10% discount. All right. And in case you are not interested in attending the live classes, you can watch the free courses that are available on the Unacademy. For that, all you need to do is go to the Unacademy website or download the Unacademy learning app and search my name over there that is ACT. Once you do that, you will get the access to all the free courses that are available on the Unacademy platform.